Hello, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net and of the gazillion of videos on YouTube, you chose to watch that one. So thank you very much uh, for being here. I promise that I will try my best to show you what the, what my mandate is in that video, is to help you solo on chord changes, on chord progressions, and more specifically in a jazz style. And of course, this, this stems from, for me, for years of teaching jazz, especially to jazz guitarists and to people that sometimes are already good at soloing. So, you know, taking a blues solo or rock solo, but will be puzzled when they encounter uh, chord progressions in, in jazz. Because remember, when you hear a chord progression and the chord changes most often in jazz, you have to switch uh, the scale you're thinking about. You have to think of a different arpeggio or a different pattern or a different mode. You can't just be in that pentatonic and keep soloing, right? So that's what we're about to do. Um, before I get started, I want to mention that we have the timestamps in the description of this video, which you can navigate the different different portions of the video in this lesson. And also there's a blog post associated on which you can see all the chords and the progressions and all the stuff that I'm doing uh, in a little more detail than, than I'm allowed to do in the video. Uh, so just as a side note, this video follows another one I shot about a month ago. That's uh, uh, soloing on static chords and this relates tightly to this the current one because what effectively I, I will tell you in this video and honestly it's not rocket science I will just tell you well if you have a progression of four chords you should you should ensure that you could solo on each chord individually so if your progression and that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna do uh, tad Dameron turn around so C E flat A flat and D flat and they're all major chords. And honestly, your first mission, and I'll put this in a, a YouTube card here in a link in the description, you should be able to solo on a C major static chord. If that's the vamp you're soloing on, if that's a single chord, you should be able to create an idea on that. And same goes for your other major chords. And then once you put them together, your goal is sort of to glue them, to glue your ideas one after another. So here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna show you the progression. So it's called a Tad Dameron turnaround. It's a C major seven, followed by an E flat major seven, followed by an A flat major seven, followed by a D flat. So your roots, once again, C, E flat, A flat, D flat. There's countless variations where you have uh, maybe an A flat seven or a D flat seven. But for now, we'll focus on four major chords to keep it simple. And to come back to this idea I was saying in the beginning that my, my students would be puzzled as to what happens if this is in the tune Lady Bird at the end and it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then you want to play a jazz line that passes through the progression, but that makes sense over all the chords, but that you don't spend all your time thinking like, oh, and you're done. It's all sudden you're into the next bar. So our process today will be honestly stupid simple. What I want to do with you, and this is not a video to watch in an armchair. <clears throat> Sorry, you should grab your guitar and practice with me. We will take a lot of time to improvise on each chord individually, four bars each. So we'll go C for four bars and then E flat for four bars, and A flat for four bars, and D flat for four bars, and then I'll go, okay, you're good with this? All right, bro, let's go and do a two bars each. So I just want you to, to have that method in your brain that you can start big and slowly reduce the time you spend on each chord until you can perform it as I played it like. And by doing that, you can really improvise your own lines and not have to rely on. You know, th this is a prefabricate prefabricated lick, I know, but what if you could improvise through and actually be improvising? So this is a really, um, really practice intensive video. Uh, there will be phases in the video where I say, I will play a little bit and it will say on your, on your screen, play now. So you should be aware that I expect you to practice. I think you'll, you're going to get the most bang for your buck by, you know, playing with me. And, uh, I just want to tell you, you know, if you were to take a private lesson with me, this is pretty much what we would be do doing. So I hope you can really take full advantage of that. I'll put the backing track on. I'll make the backing tracks available in the blog post as well for, for you that are curious that you want to solo more of it. So let's go to exercise one. You ready? Let's do this. All right. In the first exercise in this video, we're going to take that Tad Dameron turnaround, four bars each. And 
the chords are the same. I just want to spend a moment talking about the scales because I assume you can already play the major scale. C major is our first chord for four bars. And then, right? Then E flat major. Or, and then A flat major, same thing. Or you can do this in different positions, that's fine. The only little variation I want to do on the D flat is to use, I'm sorry, so use D flat Lydian scale. And the reason I want to do this is because D flat major has a G flat in it. And I want to keep that G because I like that. I like that G to be available throughout the progression for us. G is a very important note in the key of C. And this is sort of a turnaround on the key of C. So what I will do in this first part of the video, we'll take it really chill. I'm going to set a tempo of, um, uh, of a s uh, slow swing that you can get, you know, probably below 100 BPM. And we will do uh, four bars each chords four times. The first time I solo, second time you solo, third time I solo, fourth time you solo. And then what we'll do right after this, after I, I talk a little bit more, we will redo it again, but at a more challenging tempo. You ready for this? Let's do it. A one, two, three, four. All right, good job on exercise one. So if you've been struggling to keep up with the change when it changes, I would say do not go any further in this video because you're gonna struggle all the same as we increase the speed and we increase the rate at which, at which the chord change. So now another stupid simple concept that basically I want you, uh, I should have said that in the intro, actually I want you to develop that same concept when you encounter any new chord progression that you struggle with when it goes too fast. Just take the chords apart and spend more time on them. So exercise two now, which is upcoming, I will solo four bars each, but the tempo will be a bossa nova and it's gonna be closer to 120 BPM. So it's a little bit pushing it and I want you to get used to these sort of jazz tempos. All right, so let's play and let's get going. Two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, good job on this. I hope you had fun with the first two exercises. Now let's get down, let's get down to business. What I want to do is reduce the time on each chord by half. So we will have two beats. Actually, I'm going to put the, the backing track on so you get an idea. Still 120 BPM, still sort of an even eights, not swing eights, but it goes like this. Change. So that's one cycle. Okay. Good. So I I will be soloing and then in, indicating on the screen when your time to solo is. And this is plain and simple, still the same progression, but you have twice as less time to think about it when you change. But at least your brain is at that point used to, to changing between these chords. So let's get playing. Three, four. <laughs> All right, good job on that third exercise. I hope you had fun. Now we're really getting down to business. What we'll do, once again, stupid simple, we're going one bar each. So it comes by pretty fast, but what we'll be doing is slowing down the tempo a little bit. So this is gonna be a swing tempo, your good old, good old medium swing, and it's going to be 112 beats. So one bar each, I'll just give you a, a preview of the, the backing track before we get started together. Go, C, E flat. A flat. So here's a great chance to practice your scales. I think I made a mistake at the first right. Just major scale up to the seventh, right? And the reason I have my students practice this is of course, you want to create your line, you're an artist, you want to play blue stuff and really shred and play bebop lines. But if you struggle with playing eight notes and just playing the scale, probably not much interesting will come out in your solo if you can't execute that. So maybe review that before we get started and let's get playing. Two, three, four. <laughs>
Good job. All right, you came to the final hur hurdle in this video lesson. So what I want to do now next is to actually perform the turnaround as it is in the song in at the end of Lady Bird, and at, uh, often it's it's substituted for a one six two five turnaround. I think I have a podcast on that. If it's not published, it will come soon. And the reason uh, it's so uh, this the last hurdle is because it goes by pretty fast. What I've done is I reduced the tempo for what's coming to uh, 94 BPM. All right, I'm gonna give you a sample of how it sounds, but now it's, it's you know, pedal to the metal, it's two beats. So C, C, E flat, A flat, E flat, C, E flat. This is pretty fast because one, two, change, change, change so you really have to think ahead but the good news is now you're in the comfort of your home your practice studio you can practice this with me at a sort of slow bossa tempo and on your own time in your in your own uh, when you're ready to do so you can do this at breakneck breakneck speeds and if you solo on the rest of ladybird you'll be like ah the tune's pretty easy i just have to focus on the last two or four bars right so let's get going with the exercises and i'll, I'll see you at the end All right, good job on all the five exercises. I hope you have enjoyed the call and response format. By the way, this is also the stuff we do inside our membership area on the jazzguitarlessons.net website. I like to have the students perform a little bit. So, you know, listen to me and then perform and you can repeat those, sorry, noise, this should be off. So you can perform your, your improv while doing a call and response, which is in essence, the way jazz has been passed on since forever. So I hope you have enjoyed. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, it's really a pleasure to have you. As I said in the, in the beginning, I realized there's trillions of YouTube videos and you chose that one. And I hope I was able to fulfill a little bit of your learning journey when it, ter when it, it comes to jazz guitar and learning jazz on the guitar. So once again, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. That's me. And you, I will encourage you to share this video with anyone you think might like it. And please subscribe here so you don't miss any of the new updates, videos, and stuff we publish because we publish a lot of free lessons, podcasts, blogs, sheet music, etc. And I will see you soon on the website. Take care. Bye. Thank you.